Hello. As you know, a few weeks ago I met with Dr. Mason, um, obviously part of the British Astronomical Association, and he's appeared on Sky at Night no less than 15 times. Um, he's the sidekick of Sir Patrick Moore, um, you know, obviously very um, intellectual people when it comes to physics, um, unlike myself. Um, but then we had a chance to meet for about half an hour at his local library and um, we, we were discussing uh, Pluto, in fact. Um, he's very excited about the, um, the probe that is uh, sent by NASA called the Horizon spacecraft. Um, I think it left there in 2006 from Florida, Cape Canaveral, and it should be arriving July 2015 from memory. Um, so that's um, pretty fascinating. And he's also looking forward to this um, spacecraft to visit the um, icy belts of Kuiper. So he went into quite great length of um, of those different worlds, basically, and looking forward to the chemical compounds of what they are formed of. And when we were discussing about the formation or the creation that he used at the time of the Earth, I had to um, double check what he meant by created, and of course he reconfirmed he meant formation rather than how it, <laughs> rather than it just created from something. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in in a godly sense. Also, big discovery of the um, new exoplanets outside the galaxy. Let's um, have a look at some of that footage from BBC etc. Thanks for watching. Lots. So just how rare is our blue planet? Dr. Lynn Rothschild is an astrobiologist who has studied our own solar system in an effort to understand what makes Earth so special. Let's pretend that this fire here is our sun, and that this rock, say, is Venus. It's about as close to the sun as you can get and still have a chance of liquid water. So the orbit of Venus would be, say, like this. This is getting pretty hot, so I'm awfully close to the sun here. Now, on the other extreme, this is Mars, which is the farthest planet from the sun that has any chance of having liquid water. There's no liquid water on the surface today, but we know that there used to be in the past. So let's trace the orbit of Mars. Now, right between these two circles, where the orbit of Mars would be and the orbit of Venus, this is where liquid water is stable. And right in this habitable zone in our solar system is planet Earth. Our beautiful watery world is just covered with life. Just 10% closer in, and Earth would no longer be capable of supporting liquid water. Almost miraculously, Earth slots right into the heart of the habitable zone. Giving this once lifeless rock just the right elements for life to take hold and flourish. Over billions of years, microbes, plants and animals have transformed Earth into a living, breathing world. A world where one evolutionary line has led to modern humankind and civilization. But even with our civilization's most advanced technology, finding other planets like Earth has proved impossible. Iris rotator is vertical angle mode zero. The very factors that enable life a small planet at a safe distance from the sun means the telltale wobbles that these planets produce are tiny. Our Earth, when it orbits the sun, causes the sun to wobble with a speed of one-tenth of one meter per second, a smaller motion than we can actually detect. Or there could be another, more profound explanation for the missing Earth-like planets. It's possible that other stars didn't have planets around them, that we're just one of the freaks of nature that happened to grow up 
on a rocky planet. Astronomers using ESO's world-leading HARPS instrument have discovered a planetary system containing at least five planets orbiting the sun-like star HD 10180. The researchers also believe the system has two other planets, one of which would have the lowest mass ever found, making the system similar to our own solar system in terms of the number of planets. Furthermore, the scientists find that the location of the planets follows a regular pattern as also seen in our own solar system. This is the ESOcast, cutting-edge science and life behind the scenes at ESO, the European Southern Observatory, exploring the ultimate frontier with our host Dr. J, aka Dr. Joe Lister. The team of astronomers used the HARPS spectrograph attached to ESO's 3.6 meter telescope at La Silla, Chile. HARPS is an instrument with unrivaled stability and great precision, and the world's most successful exoplanet hunter. The astronomers, led by Christophe Lovis from the Geneva Observatory, studied the Sun-like star HD 10180 over a period of six years. This star is located 127 light years away in the southern constellation Hydrus, the male water snake. Thanks to the 190 individual Hartz measurements, the astronomers detected the wobbles of the star caused by five or more planets. The five strongest signals correspond to planets with Neptune-like masses, between 13 and 25 Earth masses, which orbit the star in between six to 600 days. The astronomers have also strong reason to believe that two other planets are present. One would be a Saturn-like planet orbiting in 2,200 days. The other, having a mass of only about 1.4 times that of the Earth, would be the least massive exoplanet ever discovered. This suspected planet is very close to its whole star, and so it's likely to be very hot. One year on this planet lasts only 1.18 Earth days. The newly discovered solar system is unique in several respects. First of all, with at least five Neptune-like planets lying within a distance equivalent to the orbit of Mars, this system is more populated than our own solar system in its inner region and has many more massive planets there. Furthermore, the system probably has no Jupiter-like gas giant. In addition, all the planets seem to have almost circular orbits. Dynamical studies of the new system reveal complex interactions between the planets and give us insights into its long-term evolution. Using the new discovery as well as data for other planetary systems, the astronomers discovered that the locations of the planets seem to follow a regular pattern, similar to the Tietzius border law that exists in our own solar system. This could be a general signature of how planetary systems form. Another important result is that all very massive planetary systems are found around massive and metal-rich stars, while the four lowest mass systems are found around lower mass and metal-poor stars. These properties confirm current theoretical models. There is no doubt that this remarkable discovery highlights the fact that we are now entering a new era in exoplanet science, the study of complex planetary systems and not just of individual planets. And with HARPS, European astronomers will be a driving force behind this transition.